So um, welcome to our yeah next session, I would say. Utopian Hacker Group Therapy, Learning to Retain Hope and Work Towards a Brighter Future, featuring Silex, uh, Dakora and Neyman. And I guess you will introduce yourselves. And yeah, have a great session then. Hello, hello, hello. Well, live forms assembled in this room. It's nice to have you. Uh, as Khaleesi already introduced us, we are the um, Utopian hackers who are being sad, actively being sad about the state of the world. And we want to work towards um, kind of making it better and uh, assemble and uh, deal with that in a positive, constructive way. How do we retain hope? How can we still still do something and work towards a brighter future without losing hope. Um, right, and, and that's the topic of discussion today. Um, just for you in the audience who are here locally, this is kind of, kind of a discussion group, but you can at any time join in, ask questions. You can also ask questions in the chat. As Backstreet just said, you can just, uh, you can just ask and then we'll read them, or you can open your mic and partake any discussion yourself and you should know that this event is being recorded there's an audio recording but not a video recording and maybe we'll publish that later so uh, if you want to join into the discussion with your audio feed you should know about that i'm dakora uh, and i'm here with salix and Neyman, um uh, who both are utopian hackers salix and uh, do you see yourself as more of a utopian hacker or more of a utopian artist that's a good question. I think I would say artist just because my output doesn't always um, concern typical hacking um, hacking spaces. Like it, it's not always technical, but it's not always um, breaking and reordering things as well. Sometimes it's just creating. Yes, I think more artists, but like it's a spectrum. <laughs> Of course, it always is, and um, um, we've decided to, to do this panel because I heard you wrote a book about utopias, right? Yeah, I am. Um, sorry, can you hear the, the sawing noise in the background? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you can hear it. I um, know. Do okay, that's good. <laughs> it's, it's your neighbors working positively towards the future. <laughs> yes, yes, they're using very artisanal would I think. Um, yeah, I wrote a book uh, two years ago about a time traveler and um, she is dropped into contemporary Berlin by accident and uh, writes like a, a diary about um, her observations of our time, but also compares it to her time. And the reason why I started writing that book was because I was annoyed by all this uh, dystopian uh, pop media and um, you know like everything is full of zombies and I, I like zombies but I think it was just too much negativity so I thought I wanted to for myself uh, try and think of a future that is still facing challenges but um, is not afraid to face those challenges and has not given up on itself where you can, where you can actually affect something I mean I think we're we're very often often like kind of celebrating uh, the sort of problems we have and the sort of problems um, our societies are facing. But then then it's very often focused on what kind of bad things will the future bring and usually not what, what, on what can we actually do to, to make things better and what can we do uh, as a community and not just like as an individual consumer. So like I, 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 I always thought that... I mean, utopian stories, which were very popular in the past with science fiction, are, are, are nice, but some, sometimes they just look reckless because they show all the good of the technology and without any of their risks. But then uh, this almost obsessive dystopia science fiction that we had in the last few dozens of years is also a bit annoying because it does the exact opposite thing. It shows all of the bad things and none of the good things, and, and, and it affects you psychologically-wise. And I like nowadays like kind of science fiction stories which are i mean they have cautionary tales so they don't say everything is good the technology only bring good things if they say anything bad it's like a cautionary tale like don't do this this or that but they also don't live to dystopia 
and that's much nicer to read. Uh, and, and besides the future, future yourself to think about the present. And when I read all the dystopians, it's really difficult emotionally. I mean, I mean, I mean, I always kind of wanna, um, wanna, wanna, wanna. I, I don't wanna see how things could turn out because I mean, I personally, I mean, I, you know, often these sort of stories are kind of telling you this is how it's going to turn out. Like, um, climate change is going to make the world terrible, or it's like, no, it's not going to be that bad. And we're like kind of making predictions. And personally, I don't think there's there's just one future. There's futures, and what I really try to focus on is how to get there. Instead of like like what is the possible space of futures because I think that's just huge. Yeah, I I, I agree. Also, I'm a very li- small believer in the ability to focus an accurate future for more than one hour ahead. I have no idea how this panel will end. It's 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 very tough. Well, I think um, one one idea or one one thing that I find helpful is to not imagine a utopia as like a prediction, but more of a goal to strive forward to. Yes. So that it's not something passive, but more something that we can, you know, do our little parts to get there, like making a congress, for example. Yeah, that's true. Also, also, utopias give you hope, and hope is a power that drives people in the present. So it's not only a goal, it's also like motivation, at least for me. Yeah, I thought yeah. about hope this morning. I think it's, uh, it's a two-sided, like it's a tool like everything else, right? Like if, if you yeah. use it in, in like a, a passive way, then it makes you complacent because you think, oh, everything is going to turn out eventually. But that that is not what hope should be, right? It should be something, like you said, like it motivates you to actually do something. Yeah, I mean, eventually, eventually everything that you do is in the present. And the question is, is what do you do now? So hope is something that motivates you to make actions now. For some people, dystopia is something that motivates them to do action now, but for me, it's the hope. Uh, I, I do things out of a happy place. I mean, it's being motivated by fear versus being motivated, like, as you said, hope. Like, like, like um, I, mean, I mean, because when you know how bad exactly it's going to get, then, 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 then you're, all you're doing is trying to avoid something. Uh, and I think, I think it helps to, like, like actually... Hold in your head where you want to be. Like, what is the space that 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 that, that you want to be in, in in ten years, twenty years, thirty years, and how you can you get there instead of instead of just just knowing what you want to avoid? Because I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, fear is useful to escape, but personally, I don't find fear a very useful emotion to to build. So, I mean, I mean, fear is, for me, fear is at least very much in the now. Like, fear is something I'm experiencing right now. And I might do something about right now, like for instance, going away, or or having an argument with somebody, something like that. And it's not something I'm going to going to turn into some some sort of long term ambition, uh, long term ambition. Yeah, fear is a good motivator. Maybe again, it really depends on the person. But for me, for a very short period, for an hour, for ten minutes, for you know, a car is about to hit me, and I'm afraid, so I do the right thing. But for the long term, fear is burning you, and and uh, while, while hope and uh, good feelings, something that I can build upon to work every day, many hours. It obviously depends on psychologically. So I, I had a thing, it's just a maybe most irrelevant comment. Like when I was inviting people to this uh, panel, I told them that this is a panel about utopian hackers group therapy, learning to retain hope and work towards a brighter future. And and this name turns out is a bit less catchy than you would imagine. Uh, so eventually I just showed it and said, hey, it's, it's a hackers feel good group about the future. So. I think that's great. You should have told me. I would have changed it. <laughs> Neiman, um, you, 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 I, mean, I mean, I think all of us are on some, some level doing something to work towards the future, but um, uh, Neiman, you're, you're trying to use the internet and, and like online spaces to 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 like work work towards a mission and like building building decentralized online communities. Um, what what is the image 
of online communities? What, what should they be like in 20 years? What is that image that you're ta working towards? What is your personal utopia? Okay, I'll try to say it without any words with triggers because lots of the words which, 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 which we normally use in my ecosphere can mean so many things in different contexts and many people get triggered by that. Um, so first, the main thing that I do right now in the last two and a half years is working on the D-Web, so decentralized web. And I'm trying to... So the almost obvious place to work on it is kind of as a... Uh, reaction to the current web, which many people, including myself, would like, but I, I try to work on it from the place that it's nice to have a web which is more democratic and more people actually doing stuff in it. Besides being users of platforms, it's nice to have a web where, um, where lots of people can create together a platform. Um, and that's that's my main motivation for what we do now. We try to create tools for create. We, we, we are making tools for the center as well, but the real goal is to have like democratic web in the future where there are, and democratic is one of the words that actually triggers people sometimes because democracy has all kind of different implementations. Some of them are amazing and some of them are, are, are less good. And we are in an infant stage that we don't know exactly how is the democracy of the online platforms should be. It's something that we experiment and Find with time. Uh, find with time. I mean, I mean, democracy is also an ideal that you no know, practical attempt at implementation probably reaches. So I think that's 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 why a lot of I mean, I mean, people people think democracy and substitute something that that, that every one of us that that like like some some state as it exists in practice, like Germany, obviously, like like any of these practical states has has ha, ha, does have issues. I mean, starting with something like climate change. Um, so, so, so substituting that to be an ideal is kind of not possible because it's not ideal. Yeah, and exactly. There are, there are something more ideal in, in, in your uh, democratic online governance um, projects. Right, especially we want to make tools and see and, and, and let... We don't want to come and tell people who will join us this is how the democracy, democratic structure of our platform is. This is how a democratic structure, a structure of a platform should be. Uh, I saw, I mean, I see there's lots of democratic, uh, like, decentralized the organizations now, DAOs, and I, I saw it happen a lot, and I, I am not a huge fan of it. We are more trying to build tools such that eventually when a community that has a platforms and governs it decides which democratic process they are interested in, they would be able to easily implement it. Um, the main the main goal is to have in, let the individual have more voice in the internet and mostly to have internet where the incentives are a bit different, like not maximize profit but maximize benefit of the users. Something which I feel when I use all the CCC tools, but I hardly ever feel when I go out of the hackers world. Yeah, I mean. It's 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 like it's like interesting because I mean there was a lot of hope for the internet 20 years ago when it when it was when it like emerged and now it's this corporate thing where where like most of the big pl platforms are run by corporations but then on the other hand I personally always think there are still spaces like this one we're in right now where the corporate um, um, thing is not dominant. I mean, the space we're in, like the people who are here, they're all not corporate. They're just like private people, and we're on a platform that is run by individuals, by by um, by organizations that are, that are um, not corporates. Um, so I, I think there, there 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 is some space for that utopia that still exists. But of course, like the large internet, that that is companies, but the other stuff still exists. Yeah, I I completely agree. Sorry, I was a bit distracted because there was a question here. I, I, read, yes. I tried to read the comments in the same time. I can read it. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe could you come at some point to where and how one got to act utopian? It feels a bit like the whole world is higher in different sense and everywhere there have to be things to do or to be done, I guess. 
So the question is about uh, how do we get away from from um, from like the big picture and from focusing on all the bad stuff, and how do we get towards more focusing? You know, how, how how do we go about focusing away from that? Alex, do you want to answer that? I cannot answer that. I can make suggestions, though. Um, I think, or I can say how how it works for me. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I don't think. I think none of us has um, has complete question uh, has yeah, complete answers to any of the issues. And then next week we do this, and then after that we have Utopia. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, I think for me it um, it helps to have little ideas in mind to as to what is my personal utopia and to find people that share a big part of it um, as a point of view or maybe even just a little part. Um, so for example, I volunteer in a group and there are a lot of people in this group that have um, different points of views and some are a lot more conservative than I am. <laughs> um, However, because we volunteer together, I can see that um, my paradigm or my my uh, activism has uh, an influence on their mindset. So it makes them think more about inclusivity and about, um, I don't know, progressive ideas than they maybe normally would. But it starts out with all of us wanting to help people. So we already found like a common ground there and then we continue from there to work i think my personal utopia <laughs> um yeah i think that you know this, like find your personal piece of little tiny activism and surround yourself with people that um that are active there that's i think something yeah that helps <laughs> Because yeah, it is the world is on fire for sure. I, I think most most of us would agree with that. So yeah. you're basically saying focus on the individuals and the individuals that you want to surround yourselves and the individuals that you want to help. Uh, yeah, the uh, people and ideas, um, and and make them into a nice mix. <laughs> I mean, so I, I would agree. I have like three ways. So. I'm a bit repeating myself, but for me to act utopians basically means that uh, in the present to act out of a, of a place of building things that I think which are good uh, and building from a good place. And the question for me is, you know, how do I reach this place in the present that I walk out of this motivation? So why is exactly what Silek said? Uh, I have a friend who is the most optimistic person on earth and I have the Cora who is optimistic and, and such people, you speak to them and they take everything in such a, good optimistic way and it, it rubs on you which is amazing uh, the other thing for me specifically is, is that when, when I do stuff I try not to do it like in a I try at least when I describe it because words have influence I try not to say it's against something so that's why I don't like to say decentralized web because it means against this, against centralization I like to say nowadays democratic web uh, and, and for me, it makes it like, you know, I'm building towards something, not against of something, which is already makes me feel less with the world's on fire. And the last thing, I guess, is a cliche, but it, it, it does work for me in the information age. I try to not watch the news and limit my social media who I follow because doom scrolling is definitely one of the things that take you to dystopia. And I think that I reached a state that if something important happens, I will hear about it. So one of my friends will tell me, I don't know, I will hear about it. I don't need to chase it. And 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 some people maybe think that this is a bit of closing my eyes to the world, but I just think there is so much noise uh, that makes bothers me from thinking clearly. And also maybe I'm emotionally sensitive, but but every time I see there's something bad in, in the in the in, in social media or in news, even if it's not important, it, it helps me somewhere here a bit and it just adds up so I try to minimize it yeah those are my three things but people are the most uh, important influence I, 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 I would um, I would like to reject the idea that um, I'm an sure. utopian influence on you uh, I would like to say that you're a very utopian influence on me 
Uh, you're much more cheerful than I am. At least I think so. Maybe maybe, maybe perception is different. I, I think I think you you said some very important thing there that it's like to to also surround yourself with input um, that is positive. Like per- person, I mean, I think um, when 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 uh, when you want to work on something, then you actually pull that information in, and when you actually want to do something, but maybe there's some time and space to to just ignore some of that bad that happens like in the moment and then set aside times when you when you like want to work on that versus or when you want to work on something that you can actually that is actually in your sphere that you can actually affect with, within the groups that you're part of and then um and then also take time to 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 enjoy and to to like uh, take the proverbial walk or uh, in in nature or in the city i mean for, for me personally, it's always one step at a time. So um, I try to not approach, like, I try to not solve a big problem. I try to find a little problem that I can solve and that I can actually do something about. And that, that like, I, I try to find the things that are are close to me that are, like, happening in, in communities that I'm that I'm actually a part of that, that are right in front of my doorstep and that are actually kind of in my personal sphere of influence and that that is work. I mean, personally, I've decided at some point to not do anything that is, that is, um, that is morally bad and just do uh, adverse things that I'm already great with my work. Um, and, and I mean, I, I mean, personally, I think it would help a lot if like people just, just refused or, or if, if, if they have the privilege to be able to do so, just refuse to, to, to work for anybody that's, that's not, not uh, at least doing something, that is ethically neutral, and um, if 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 they have the privilege and the resources to do so, reject working for anyone that's actually harming the world. Because I mean, let's be real: most people who are actually um, employed by somebody doing um, uh, doing a lot of harm to the world are usually the ones who are who are quite privileged, actually. Nowadays, yes. Nowadays, sure. I guess I guess in the past it was probably different, but nowadays, yeah. I, I think I would like to challenge the notion of optimism. Um, not completely disagreeing, but I think uh, there can be different motivations to act towards uh, utopian ideas. And um, when you said you have a friend who is very optimistic, I had to think about uh, a very good friend of mine who is very optimistic also. And we tend to to discuss or find a lot about that because I feel like I'm very pessimistic. Um, just in comparison to him. So I, I do not feel things are hopeless, but I am very, I would say, realistic. Um, and I get most of my energy from this very happy, angry place. So I, you know, I see things that I think are unfair and uh, do not make sense so I get angry and then I get busy um that that helps me to get up <laughs> so I actually do have a high news consumption and uh, I don't do the doom scrolling I think but I do have a huge RSS feed and that gets checked a lot uh, RSS feed I also have huge, but it's it's different for me at least because it's it's of geek websites and blogs. It's not it's, it's stuff that I'm waiting to see what's new. But but of course it depends on the resources. It's the social media that I do the doom, doom scrolling. Yeah, I, should I, say think, yeah, I think uh, the point of social. Or the, I think one big difference between social media and news is. <laughs> and there's a bunch, but uh, in, in terms of what is important to us here is um, most of the social media posts just give you like uh, a tidbit of information, just one, they make one point uh, because it has to get across you in like a limited amount of time. Mm-hmm. And when you have a lot of different news sources, and I'm, I'm saying like really diverse news sources, like different languages, different cultures, different topics. Um, you get a much broader picture of how complex the world is. And I like that. I like that there are many doors and there are many obstacles and some of them, a lot of them interact in different ways. And I, I think the complexity is something that, and, and again, we're going back to this idea of like being an artist or being a hacker. I think this is a very 
hacker idea that to dive into a problem of huge complexity is also like diving into a puzzle. And mm. and that, you know, is kind of fun then. And, and I mean to 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 talk I mean I mean and to talk about the problematic aspects of optimism. I mean when I when I um prepared this session I was talking to one person who who ended up didn't didn't really want you to attend because they basically said, I mean, there's there's something very toxic to just being optimistic. Like if 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 that's all you're doing, and if you're if 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 that's the level you're staying on, just being optimistic, you're you're not being realistic, and you're 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 just painting over 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 reality with with like you you're painting a happy face over reality, and and that's not a good thing to do. And I mean, I I I, I mean I mean when I said that, I thought they were right. I mean, you 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 kind of wanna stay optimistic and hopeful uh, and stuff like that but but you, but you still want to see reality and i mean i think that is where where you come in to try to actually get an get an accurate picture of reality instead of maybe the one that the social media is trying to trying to have us uh, emotionally activate i mean i mean that's what social media does i mean to retain viewership or to retain uh, attendance basically Social media algorithms tend to be optimized to 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 um, to multiply the posts that are most inflammatory, that will get the greatest um, greatest reaction, and the easiest reaction to get is uh, is fear and anger most of the time. So, so that's what these platforms like here cards. And I mean, I mean, maybe maybe you're right that it's actually necessary to get a proper overview of 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 of, of like a field and properly study it instead of just studying kind of the social media input. I have a question that I think everybody thinks right now. Uh, how many sources Cydex do you have in your RSS feed? <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, it's a joke, but I guess it's really a lot. Uh, Name it, how many do you have? Sorry? I, probably like 50, 60? Um, yeah, and I... So not that many, and it's already I can hardly follow them. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to to um to check my podcast feed, and uh, I, I'm still scrolling. It must be <laughs> like more than I don't think it's too many. I think fifty sixty sounds about right. I mean, like without the podcast, that's just the ones that you read. But they are, um, you know, broad spectrum. I think that's the point. Because a bunch of them, you know, like if you get DPA and Reuters, then it's the same news, <laughs> but they're from a different platform. So that doesn't really count. But yeah, like try to, I don't know, have a, like sometimes I read RT because I want to laugh. I've, you know. <laughs> Just for the amusement of it. Like, yeah. like, like Postal Young, um, like I said, a newspaper and then, then the sun and then Russia Today. Yeah, yeah, non-news podcasts, but also some some news podcasts. Yes. I don't know. Do you know? Um, um, what are they called? Um, on, I need to, just... Go ahead, talk. There is hammering. I mean, I mean, I mean at, at personally, at some point, I just try to like like my my medium is actually podcasts, and when when I said I listen to. Hundreds of podcasts. I was, I was, of course, joking. I'm not actually listening to most of them. Most of them are like that, and I just haven't, uh, haven't, haven't decided to eject them from my feed. But I mean, I, I did go out and try to just see, okay, like, 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 what kind of podcast can I listen to from? That's from the US. That's kind of a. I, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm bound to listen to more like leftist perspectives from the US because I would, I don't think I'd endure the right. But 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 then I checked. There are some podcasts there that are interesting. But then 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 from a lot of podcasts, some some Eastern European podcasts that were interesting. Eastern um, European podcasts. Yes. How do you yeah. which how do you find? I I didn't know that. I I, I just English. I just googled. And there, there was like something. Um, oh, some. Uh, so 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 let me scroll. It's actually very hard. I didn't prepare that. Do you guys want to start a pad? Because I, I feel like I can always use new podcast recommendations and I guess maybe so, people would appreciate. 
So, so the first thing that that comes up from scrolling down is just the Ottman History podcast, which I just I just basically gave me a world world a world. I, I mean, I just googled world uh, podcasts and then then like looked at lists, international podcasts and then scrolled down and saw what um, what um, podcasts were interesting. Talk Eastern Europe is one I found. Okay, cool, cool. I, I, I'm I'm much less of a podcaster than you both, and the little podcasts that I listen to are in Hebrew, so they're not relevant to anyone here. Uh, it's, it's my mother tongue, but um, yeah. I mean, Haaretz has 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 an English version, so um, that is yeah, more has... interesting to listen to. Them. That's true. But I I, 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 I listen to this that I said as someone said here, uh, Geek Drew. I listen to lots of non-news podcasts about esoteric topics in which I would otherwise never would get into because it's my escape time. <laughs> yes, true, true, true. So we wrote down some questions to change the subject here. Like we have three questions, three three pieces of homework because uh, if you're like me, you found homework always particularly uplifting. I'm obviously not being serious, but um, whether you've done your homework, I'm, I'm not somebody who liked uh, doing homework, but maybe maybe some people are here are more inclined. So, um, so one thing um, I at least ask myself to bring is good news, some some good news. And for me, like some very good news these past few years is um, is that there's a lot of online things. Like for me personally. And it, 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 has, it has given me the opportunities to see some people to partake in some events that I could have never taken part of uh, previously to that because of disability, but also just because these things were easily accessible. You can just like pop in some conference or something if, if that is just open and happening that you couldn't otherwise. And you can start working with people from, from all over the world, from the US, from, from, from other continents that... that that would have been very hard 10, 15 years ago, and I didn't think that would have been usual just two years ago before the pandemic to do that. So that that's very part, very good news for me, actually. What sort of good news did you bring, audience? If you if you want to respond to that, you're you're yeah, would be happy. If I, could, if I could just comment about what you said, I gave a like a lightning talk in Internet Archive like a month ago. And this is possible because of pandemic. <laughs> Otherwise, I would never be able to do it. So this is the good thing. I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not happy with the last two years, but this is one of the good things that came out of it. Is, 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 is there like some some internet archive building that you can get into, or is it is it all online? I'm like I'm like picturing the internet archive office. I think that probably have, doesn't think even have... exist, does it? I think they had, I mean, I think that they had physical meetups before uh, the pandemic, especially because in the online meetups, they think how before that they used to go to physical meetups and go get drunk afterwards. But right now, it's definitely like once a month, a D web meetup of the Internet Archive is online. Uh, I mean, it's not my thing, so I think that I can promote it with feeling good. If you want to know the D web, uh, I am as a person who does the D web, came there to study. From this meetup, so what, many cool things and what's projects. The can, you, can I explain the web for a second? Okay, but I didn't want to bear in and take the question of uh, what. No, but you've you mentioned the net, you've mentioned the term now. You have to explain it. <laughs> Give it a so D web is decentralized web, um, and it's a movement that probably goes since many years. I think that the first version of it that I know of is. Freenet, which tried to do decentralized websites like many, many years ago, and afterwards, I think it's called Freenet, right? Afterwards, there was a zero net uh, and and that and all kind of stuff. Um, and the Internet Archive really got into it. I'm not sure exactly which date, but I know that we had like a D Web Camp um, a few years back, 2017 or 18. And the idea of the D Web is that. The internet was supposed to be decentralized. Most of the internet protocols are decentralized, like email and DNS, but eventually the things that won right now, lots of them are not decentralized. I mean, even email, basically, I run a non-Gmail uh, server and my emails keep on going to spam folders of people. Uh, 
Um, the D Web idea is to use is to build the B D Web, which is basically technically built upon peer to peer networks, uh, and practically is more democratic than the current web. There are many different flavors of it. Uh, there are flavors that use blockchains, like especially the central name services. There are flavors that don't use blockchains at all. Uh, there is Aragon, which is like a, a D-Web browser. Uh, there, are web, there are versions which are websites based on BitTorrent. Most of it is in an ongoing experimental change, meaning that I don't think it's anybody found yet right now what is the best way to do D-Web. It, but uh, we have our own version that I'm doing in my project, which is based on IPFS and ENS. So, so DWAP basically distributed web-like technology used to, to make the web less centralized. Yes, to make the web less centralized and, in my point of view, also to just let, make it more democratic. More that people are not more than users, but if you... I think maybe Wikipedia is a good example of what the d should be. I'm saying it like with cautious because I know that I, I'm not fully aware of the Wikipedia governance uh, process. I know that some people are in love with it and some people hate it and, and, and I didn't dive in to form an opinion. But Wikipedia is basically something where people who contribute a lot, does a lot of editing, at least in the Hebrew Wikipedia, uh, they get a vote uh, on, on favor decisions. And the more you are involved as a user, the more vote you have. And Wikipedia treats everyone equally, as far as I know. So you can be a billionaire, but you cannot, it, it, it hardly helps you to, to modify your Wikipedia entry. And so I think Wikipedia is kind of the vision. It's not decentralized like from infrastructure, but let's come to vision. I, like as an example of, okay. of uh, what the deal is. That's pretty cool. So there's one pretty big d thing. I did, never thought of it like that. that. I mean, I mean, it's nice to know that it's that it's actually actually happening. So that should have given you all some time to think about the good news question. Salix, so did you bring some good news? Yes, but I was distracted because somebody posted the physical office of the Internet Archive, and I looked it up, and it on Google Maps, uh, and it does not look like it's, I mean, it looks like... It's not an office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it looks nice. I mean... All right. Anyway, my good news. Yes, um, we talked about this. Uh, I am so, so hyped that we have mRNA uh, vaccines and that they are um, actually, you, you know getting so much spotlight and that the development uh, to, towards their use for other things than just the pandemic, like cancer and HIV, are progressing so fast. I think that's so uplifting and, and gives me so much hope. I mean, having an HIV vaccine would be huge. Absolutely. That's pretty damn cool. Did anybody okay. else... Bring, bring, bring good news. Do you have personal good news or other good news? Or good news about the world? I mean, my good news uh, is that, so in this d web we are building, which is based on ENS and IPFS, there are already a few thousand websites. And right now we have like a simple search engine that we are building for it, and we are doing the moderation of it, and we had to block only two websites. There is no porn, there is no... Anything. I mean, there are some things which are controversial, but nothing really evil. And I think it's amazing that. that uh, All right. That I, I you, can, you can discuss about. You can reasonably have a discussion about. Yeah. Sorry. But all things that you can have reasonably a discussion about. Yes, uh, reasonable discussion. Or even you know, there, there is real evil, evil, and there is just stuff which is completely opposite opinion of mine, but it's not racist uh, crime, criminal and stuff. Yeah. That is, I, th I think that's pretty fantastic news. Yeah, this will change when we reach 100,000 websites. With it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, hopefully that stays the way as it grows. Which might be tough, because when things get bigger, uh, more idiots start to join. 
or more people who are who are not really um, who are not really there to be constructive. Um, there are more. Um, there, there. I've, I've asked some other questions, and um, one thing that would interest me is like, like, what are things that actually didn't end the world? Because when you think about it, like, like we have all these, um, all, all these things that are supposed to end the world. I mean, the big one, the last 100 years was atomic weapons, and up till now it hasn't happened. And at least I think so. Uh, I, I, I think somebody would have informed me. And then, then there's like the really esoteric stuff, like the uh, 2012, um, the 2012 supposed end of the world from the Mayan calendar, which is, which um, I mean, I mean, let's be real, it wasn't going to happen in any case. So, um, but but we, 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 we didn't know that. We didn't know it for sure. So. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, there could be a pink elephant outside my window right now, flying and <laughs> flapping its wings. It's it's just very unlikely. So, but but I mean I mean when 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 I pondered the question personally, I also thought there there are some some ends of worlds that actually did happen because I mean we when when we think about the end of the world, we always think about our own end of the world, and like when you think about it, there have been a lot of civilizations that have stopped that stopped being what 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 they were before due to I mean I mean due to just stopping or due to being replaced by something else or due to things like colonialism. So so I mean that that's I think that's also something to think about that that actually some ends of the worlds did happen. Um but is is there anything in your lives or in, in your that 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 um that drew particular attention for you that, that didn't end the world? Um, things that turned out better. <laughs> there, we talked about podcasts before and I think a lot of you know the, the Flash Forward podcast. Um, they um, they did an or she did an episode on the millennium problem. And um, you know if you are old enough you remember like ooh it's the are the computers going to stop counting after two thousand because of uh, digit, you know, um, and then that didn't happen, and everybody laughed about it and was like, "Oh, you know, it's, it, it never was a big problem." But she actually pointed out that a lot of people foresaw that it could be a problem and worked on it a lot to prevent it from being a problem, and so they did. So that's actually um, really a catastrophe that was averted by um, what's the opposite of hindsight, like foresight. You know? Yeah, I guess so. You have the same thing now, I think, with co quantum computers. Like, if quantum computers really are implemented, uh, then, then all of our cryptography, I mean, lots of our cryptography will, 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 will be obsolete, but there are so many people who work on it with foresight um, on quantum computer, like post of quantum com computers encryption. And it's exactly from the same motivation that, 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 that you said. And if eventually a quantum computer will be invented or implemented in a, in a solid way and nothing will happen, it will be partly thanks to that. I, I know there's an interesting aspect that um, walls often don't end because we prevent that from happening. Here's uh, here's one contribution from uh, from the other attendees. Uh, one good news is people. Most of them are good and nice, like the people talking, taking part on RC3. It's so nice to see many people who are so different and have uh, the same ideas about the world and how it should be. Uh, and there's another contribution. I can. Which is I mm -hmm. just wanted to, to let you finish your sentence. <laughs> um, Perhaps exceedingly obvious and good news, RT3 is happening. So many of us will get to interact with or just watch people we enjoy. Not nearly as significant as uh, the good news like va vaccines, but good also. So RC3 is happening. I mean, I mean, I mean, we didn't exactly expect RC3 to be an end of the world. I've been told there will be one tomorrow. Um, but I don't think it's going to be as bad um, 
uh, and vaccines. And vaccines are a good point. I mean, I think vaccines stopped a lot of falls from ending. Yes. And we didn't thought RC3 will end the world, but some people thought that the cancellation of RC, of the Congress will end the world. So it's good news that it did so, I, I, I've been told there is a sort of world that you can't run around and, and they're going to stop that, but uh, it will survive in our memories even after the servers are stopped. I mean, personally, I think that there, there's, there's, re, there's really a lot of examples of of, of like like uh, I mean I mean I mean there was there was uh, I I I had a panel discussion with um with um with with, with a person with Theodore Spalia um who I talked to talked to um, nine months months ago and he made the point that there's like problems and problems are something something you solve and then there's catastrophes and catastrophes actually change the world you're in and I mean um. But one thing I personally tend to think about is that that catastrophes they usually some after, like something big changes in your life or on a more more grand scale, um, and and there's people to remember that, and there's some continu- continuity there. Things change, things are better or worse. Sometimes they're just different, but but there's still some continuity there. And there's if if a world has ended, I mean there's there's um, some other world. I mean. I think I think in in some ways, like the world we currently live in, I mean, I mean that has to end. I mean, there's there's a lot of things about this world that have to end, and in the next twenty thirty years, this world is going to change a lot in a way that that that, that makes it completely different. But that that doesn't mean that won't be a good world. I think it will be a better world. So maybe sometimes it's even a good thing that a world actually ends. So I think another way to rephrase your question, which would bring to maybe optimism, okay, not, not optimism, which is also a charge, but to top your thinking or something, um, things that you thought that will be super bad, but eventually turned out good, which I had such things in my life a lot because I'm so bad at actually focusing the future. Um, and so for me, the, the best example is when I was a, uh, Young teenager, uh, somebody told me about, I, so I was like living in the IRC, I guess like lots of people in the Congress. Uh, and then somebody told me about ICQ. And this was ICQ came from Tel Aviv and I'm from Tel Aviv. And this was like in super initial level that they were starting it. And, uh, and the person told me that those guys developed that. And our first, my first thought and my friends were like, who the hell needs it? We have IRC. This will not bring anything good. And, but then uh, I am, we were super wrong. The IM came to life, and I think that we are super good. I have so many more communication with people because of it. So let, let me just explain this term for the un, um, unenlightened. IRC is Internet Relay Chat. It's like a very old protocol for just chatting with people, like group chats. And I mean, that was the predominant thing on the internet for some time, and then it was replaced by new chat protocols like ICQ or AI. And I mean, today, personally, I'm using Matrix and Signal a lot. And so that, of course, always was that and that. In this case, maybe not was more chat protocols, but it's still like there's a community attached to that that, that, that goes away or changes. Yes, thank you for, for explaining. I'm using too many old words, I guess. No, no it's all right. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of people under 30. We're not insane and still using IRC today like I am, uh, because personally I still am. It's a bit of 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 a of a of a drag still using it, but um, it's useful in uh, uh, for some things. And there there is a third question we prepared, and and maybe Salix wants to give us some background about that question because the question is. What is a good reason for traveling to the year 2107 for your sabbatical? Salix, do you want to say something about that? <laughs> yeah, I still couldn't think of a reason. I think curiosity. It's just, it's the best. Reason. As long as you stay curious, you always got things going on. I, I was super curious what, you know, what predictions come true if... Uh, 
what what problems still exist that exist today but also what new problems may be there you know like what didn't we even think about like maybe there are more different species in the ocean that now eat plastic because evolution is like screw you we're just going to eat the plastic or whatever you know like we there's so many things that we cannot even fathom and i would love to see those so I was about to say that if anybody can answer this question, is you, but apparently I was wrong because it's a very difficult question. I, I, I just wanted to add that the reason it's 2107 is that the time traveler from your book is coming to represent, and you just neglected to say that, which which is, of course, very humble, but I, I thought I'd just add that. I, I mean... <laughs> I again would like to invite everybody else attending to to like add their thoughts and maybe start a discussion. And we can we can we can just get into some discussion rabbit hole. Personally, I I just really want to see what I'm, I mean. Um, I, I think there's a lot happening right now. I think there's a lot a lot happening right now. I think the I I, I think with the introduction of the internet, the, the, there was a kind of end of the world there too because it was like the world as it was before the internet. And I think. I think I think we tend to not notice that because a, a lot of us lived in that world. I lived in that world for a very short time, um, but um, uh, but but I, I I felt it being different, and and now we remember back to that, and that that that, that was just the past. But I think the way we do things today is very different. I mean, we can just lock up everything we want to on our phones, on the bus, waiting for some other bus. So that is that is uh, I mean that is absolutely amazing that we can do that. And I, I just want to read the analyses of um, what that is um, like, like, like what happens now. And I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous answer because it, it just circles back to, to, to understanding the present. But, but like that is what I do. I freeze myself going to the year 2107 or later, and then then open open the search engine then the will be uh, the search engine of choice in the future and and look for analysis of what happened today and it won't be the metaverse <laughs> I, I, I mean not, not, the, not the Facebook metaverse but the metaverse in general I'm joking what's I, that don't explain the metaverse oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Silex said it <laughs> <laughs> It's that Facebook thing that's going to die immediately. Yeah, um, it's going to be the MySpace of the future. But there was there was metaverse before Facebook, and there is metaverse which is not Facebook. Uh, like I mean, I know names. Sorry. It's just because they steal names and terms. It's not theirs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm not a strong metaverse person, uh, but I know that there is the Centerland. Which is, yeah, I get, I guess, a bit like MySpace or Second Life, but just more uh, in in a modern thing where you are supposed to get your own. So you enter a different world and you live there. It's a bit like the two D world of of the, of the, of, the, of, the, of the Congress, actually. Um, yeah. With more ads. With more ads, yes, yes, yes. But I, 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 I like the concept because I, I try to escape the reality all the time. So I guess it's not, it's, it's a good way to do that. So by the way, you said about the internet. One thing that, that I thought would end, end the world when I was 12 was, was the internet. Because between 8 and 12, I was using BBSs and I was addicted to it. And then the internet came and destroyed the BBS um, ecosphere. And... For about a month, which is eternity when you are 12, I thought that the internet would end up my life. So, <laughs> what is BBS? Can you explain that? Uh, it's, it's like the internet before the internet. So, if, um, people could download, like, set up their computer such that other people could connect to it. And again, I had a very narrow <laughs> view of what's happening in Israel, but there were people and groups who set up like a computer or a network of computer with 20, 30 phones. And then you could go into and have chats and these kind of things. Uh, there was a mailing list called Ultinet in Israel, which I think all the geeks in my age were there in one way or another. 
Um, and then the internet came and, and this was my social area and change it. And it, it took me a month to understand the IOC is better, but in this month, I took it quite, quite hard. Khaleesi, would you like to read the comment that just came in in the chat? Yes. Um, I was about to suggest a parallel between BBS and a plain text telnet user interface. Then I realized that's just as unlikely to be known. Thank you for that <laughs> comment. I now have to explain telnet. Telnet is a protocol for sending text over the internet. And you can do anything you like in it. And what it's been like when that was actually used to do stuff, I don't know, because I wasn't born yet. Just to be clear, uh, I'm the young one here. Um, <laughs> but I mean, per person personally, I, 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 I very much enjoy getting lost in vaults. I mean, for me personally, that 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 has a big pastime um, as 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 a child and teenager, just 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 exploring different worlds. And I mean, that's that's part of the thing, part of the reasons why I like something like the like the RC3 world a lot is because just you can you, you can enter you can enter a different realm and explore. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm kind of off in it because, I mean, I often just use computer games. Like, like I, I literally took a walk in Minecraft. <laughs> I, I can't be the only one, but sometimes I just open Minecraft and there's like like a nice shader pack and souls and then I just I just go, go on a walk and that I, I kind of enjoy that as a world. Yeah, I... I agree. There were, there were um, so in the center land, I got exposed to it recently because there were a few people who made a project which connects to the center as well. So that's how I mm -hmm. find out things. And, and there, it was like a fun project. They basically gave a prize for anyone who solved a simple quest, which took you to some coordinates in this decentral world. And in these coordinates, you had like a small ball which a rainbow coming out of it and if you went in with your character you got like a small prize that you can keep there and this was fun i mean i got to explore some areas of this fictional world and uh, i had a quest i got a prize which i already lost <laughs> it was fun. what sort of prize did you get i i mean i think they get some kind of item uh i don't remember which one because it was not the goal <laughs> Like some kind of item in, in this, I mean, in those metaverses, you can have your, like in video games, your games can have its own, uh, it, 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 its own uh, inventory. Um, and then they created some kind of item that you get to your inventory, which showed that you did the request. But it was more, more about the exploration, really. I mean, it's, it's very nice to know just in these worlds, there are people there. Like, 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 I mean, I mean, a, a price like that is probably, I mean, I mean, like the, 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 um, the badges we get in the RC3 world. I mean, they're, they're yeah. like little graphics, but, but I mean, I mean, I mean, one thing they do show and they do say is that like there was some way that an actual human built that and that, that you on a way interacted in this world. So it's not like, like just this, this realm that is kind of static. It is defined by, by, by what humans do in it. So that's another example of something that I thought would will end the world, but it turned out to have good usages, which is gamification. It was like really trendy a decade ago, or a bit less. And I, 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 I hated it when it started because I felt that I'm it's like all kind of people try to motivate me to do things that I don't want by making a game out of it. But the badges of, of, of the art of the art world are fantastic gamification. It's really fun. I love gamification. I have a almost uh, a year streak on Duolingo and it only works because it's constantly rewarding you for every little French word that you can manage to utter. It's it's great. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, it took me like a year to admit that I was wrong, but yes, I agree now. I, I still haven't tried. I, I have a friend who... Um, who, who uh, uh, so, so when I'm visiting them, I'm always visiting and visiting, and at some point they'll take out the phone and say, "Apologies, I really need to learn Swedish now." <laughs> which is, which is like, which is a bit absurd, 
which is, which is also like a nice way to do advertisement because if your friends take out their phones to learn Swedish in the middle of a conversation, because they're compelled to do the right I mean, I mean, that's that's great advertisement. I mean, I just I just have to say kudos there to the developers of that app. As far as yeah, far as it's 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 Sorry. Go through, uh, you know, if you, if you take a walk and you do like a, a speaking lesson and um, you start to use like nonsense sentences, people won't bother you because you can speak nonsense sentences in French. I, I sometimes talk to myself by meowing. Just for the heck oh, of it. Okay. I don't think they have that as a language yet. They do have Klingon. <laughs> but they don't have cat. <laughs> so what's your latest? You know, like another thing for, for is to be said for gamification when you think about uh, Pokemon Go and how that brought people, you know, like together but also outside and you know explore the world, like the yeah, IRL world. Um That worked really well. Yeah, yeah, I mean gamification. I mean, so almost every sport is gamification. I like to play basketball. It's gamification uh, that, that was made. To, I mean, not made, but it's a way to make me do physical activities because otherwise, I wouldn't leave the computer. So yeah, Pokemon yeah, Go is similar. I mean, I mean a lot of these these like new. I mean, there there's a couple of these like 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 social technologies like gamification. Um, and nudging, which which um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm sure the, these concepts existed in some way 20 years ago, but I, I don't think they were talked about as much as they are today. And I mean, it's it's interesting because we we we, we tend to right now use these these concepts in a very corporate way, mm -hmm. um, and and like like use them for some weird arbitrary goal, like like this company making money. But I mean, and 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 then for usually for anti patterns. Or things that are really not that good of an idea, but I mean, you could you could always you, know, you could also use nudging and and gamification for good. And I mean, I, I mean, arguably, learning a language is is like um, certainly good in some ways, but but also neutral. But I mean, you can also gamify, gamify a lot of other things. Like mm -hmm. you could you could gamify uh, like just 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 helping your neighbors. You could build a platform around that where you where you just Just, to, just like every time you say hi to your neighbor, you get like five points, and then you suddenly have social interaction. And you have this, like in this weird, um, utopian—I don't know if it's utopian, but definitely futuristic cyborg where you have just started to talk to your neighbors again in the city. And, I don't and, know and, if I, I want to if I want to gamify social interaction. I think that's um, I see potential problems. <laughs> I mean that's Twitter, isn't it? Yeah, that is a potential, yeah. potential problem. That is an actual problem. But I, I think that actually what 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 the the Kora said. I would. I mean, yes, I, I agree with Alex completely. I maybe don't want now when things are relatively normal to gamify my social interactions. But during the lockdown, the long lockdown, this would have helped me. Uh, To, to do things which I should have done and push myself to do in, within the little limitation that the little possibilities there were. And maybe if there will be another lockdown, hopefully not, maybe it would be a really cool small project to do to gamify something that keeps people sane during the lockdown. Uh, like for me, I started to people speak with, with seller in the bakery and I made friends with them because I was, I needed something. So. I think um, what you said before that, you know, we talk more about things like nudging and gamification is because um, there's a lot more awareness as to what is a possible tool, you know, uh, and we also are a lot more um, as, as a whole, as a society, a lot more skilled in um, in understanding not only visual media but like media in general because it surrounds us so much so it's interesting to explore that and it's interesting to see um what kind of parameters we deal with and how we can use them and i think it's it's very important to understand nudging uh gamification but also like the the um what's the, the bestrafung you know like if you get the something 
Punishment, fine. yeah. Like fine. all yeah. all of these. Well, fine. A fine can be one of those punishments, but oh, like okay. all these yeah. different things uh, to understand them as tools. And and again, uh, a tool and a weapon is the same thing, right? Like mm-hmm. as you said, like, like you can use any any tool as a weapon usually. Exactly. Like, like you can use a tool in a good way and a bad way always. So it's like the yes. tool itself is kind of ethically neutral. It's like how you use it. Yes, like the internet. I I I, I do wonder, circling back to the point about um about Twitter being gamified social interaction. I, I mean personally I tend to think that, that the way Twitter um, like the way these algorithms operate, that that's probably not a good way to use it. But I mean, you could use the same tools, the same tools of analysis um, and of technology to actually actually have a process where we like try to really iron out what do we want from from a technology like Twitter as a society. What are our goals? That what should happen in a platform like that, and how can we actually use uh, algorithms in an open and transparent way to, to 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 do that for society instead of just just fulfilling that need that that like some random company of, of like of like being used because I mean I mean the, the way these companies optimize is like they just want attention so what they're going to do is like like always maximize for being for being more and more addictive and I mean I, th- I think it would be possible to have different optimization goals that could be really interesting um, to, to have an online platforms like that. So, I mean, I, like one of the original I don't know, ideas of hopes for, for, for me for social media is what it was that it would give you lots of independent journalism. Um, like, and, but, but instead of that, at least what I got was less independent journalism and lots of uh, fake news. <laughs> um, like, it's very difficult for me when I see stuff in social media in my professional even in my professional area to know if it's fact or if it's truth or not if it's something which was researched or not but i'm not sure how to i don't know how to use the tools to 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 implement this call so if i would have known i would i, I would have done that I mean, there's a lot of effort that is involved, like because you ha- you actually have to do all the analysis. I mean, it, it's it's very hard as as like as a developer to to also do that because that's kind of like like even just finding out what you want to do that is kind of a different job description, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's two roles in one. It's difficult to do. Uh, uh, I mean, we're in an odd position as like these technologists. Of, of of basically watching this. I mean, we're engineers who who are like like in in the hacker community. I think engineers who decided to to like also do social consciousness in in, in some respects and like have a hacker ethics. But but like I, I mean, there, there should be dedicated people for that. So I think from what I'm hearing, like our conversation is circling to an end. I would ask you, both of you, Salix, do you want to block anything? Um, do I want to plug anything? Uh, well, to, tomorrow night I'm going to be VJing um, at 10 p.m. at Xign. Uh The set is going to be um, drum and bass, and it's called Mask Mobile. So if you, I think you need like a minimal ceiling because we will be jumping a lot to this music <laughs> <laughs> or wear hard helmets or something. Uh, yeah, we would love to have you there. Um, or listen to the stream on your mobile phone outside. Like that's something that's possible to you today. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. Maybe I, I, I actually tried to get a drink and attend the party. Um, I'm going to plug into the comments the website of this project that I'm doing now. It's called the uh, Asteroids. It's, it's like supposed to be Ethereum Asteroids. Um, but then we also find out that Asteroids in Spanish means like Asteroids, the drugs. And, but now maybe it's a bit too late to, to change it already, the name. 
Uh, and if you're curious about the D work that we are doing, we want to we want to have different voices who discuss how to create democratic uh, democracy for an online platform in a way that benefits the people living in this platform. We, we don't know. We, we, we more know about technical ideas. Um, yeah, and we already have a small community of about a bit more than 100 people, so it's fun. It's a good stage to, stage to, to, to check it out. So the website you just pasted in the chat is easterrights.eth.limo and Salex posted arteriaflux.com. These are the two websites. Uh, yeah. And so, arteriaflux.com mm-hmm. is, uh, is divided. It's one, one part um, links towards the book and the other one is for the AI band that um, was screened Two days ago at uh, the conference, maybe there will be uh, a recording of that, I think. There yeah, should be, but it was part of the regular program. Cool. So, so the can... AI band project is awesome. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So you can check out both the um, book and the AI band project, the artificial intelligence band project on ulteriorfox.com. So, Alex, thank you very much for attending and um, for, for, for spending time with us on Utopic Thoughts. And um, thank you very much, Naaman, for attending to you. Uh, it was a true pleasure talking to both of you. Thank, thank you for inviting us. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to Khaleesi for being our herald today and reading all the uh, other attendees questions and Thank you to all the other attendees for, for like taking part and being a part of this. Yeah, th- thank you. It was really great. I think it was super interesting. <laughs>